So hopefully you were able to download all of your Java tools and get things running the way that you want them. We're going to start actually doing some Java now, and because of my personal bias towards having a proficiency in command line, I'm going to start off in the command line environment. Don't worry, we'll switch to Eclipse quickly, but I do think that there is an advantage to knowing how to do things in command line because every so often things don't work the way you expect them to inside of your GUI, and it's nice to have this as a backup. So we're going to start off by writing kind of the standard Java program or the standard first program for anything, and that's hello world. So we'll write a little file, hello.java. And one of so some things that you should know about Java. First off, it is an object-oriented programming language. At least it's mostly object-oriented. It's not as completely object-oriented as the Scala language is, and we'll see the ways in which it is less object-oriented uh, here fairly soon. But also, it does not have a scripting environment. So whether you're coming from Scala or any scripting language like Python or JavaScript or whatnot, you're probably used to something where hello world would simply be print line hello world, and we'd be done. And it's not going to be quite that easy in Java. And that is because we need to put everything inside of a class. We have to write a full application. So we'll start off public class hello. Now there are some details that are significant here. You might recall that I called this file hello.java. The name of the file and the name of the public class inside of it have to match in Java. You do not get to change that. Um, many other languages are more flexible, but in Java they absolutely have to match. If I make it so this is a different class name than the file it's in, we will get an error. And this allows the Java, pro the Java compiler to find things. It turns out that there are also packages and they are given by directory structure. And so in, in Java, things need to be where their names say that they're supposed to be in order for the, the Java language to find them. Also, because we need to write this as an application, we're going to put in a main. So we'll write that in here. And it has to have ex pretty much exactly the signature, with the exception, of course, that the variable name can vary. So public, the visibility modifier, meaning that everything should be able to see this main, which is useful if you want to be able to run it from outside code. Static. The idea of static means that this is associated with the class, not with instances of the class. This is one of the things we'll come back to a few times, and it's also one of the aspects of Java that's not as completely object-oriented as some other languages. Void. In Java, return types go in front of the whether it's a function or a variable, and the void return type basically means this doesn't return anything. And in the case of Java, it truly does not return anything. It is not an expression. You could not use main to do some calculation of, of any form. There's nothing that you get back from it. Then the name of the method, which has to be main. And then the arguments are of type string array. And arrays are denoted by square brackets. And once again, this is it's customary to call this args, but it does not have to be called args. In Java, we have to end things that are lines with semicolons. The other thing that needs to change here is we can't just call print line. Okay. We either need to put in an import, and indeed it needs to be a static import, or we can use the full name. Turns out the print line is inside of system.out. So system is a class that holds, as you would guess, system files, and it has an object inside of it called out, which links to whatever the standard output is, and it happens to be a type that has methods on it like print line. So that's our code for our hello world. If I want to actually run it, I have to go through two steps. First, I have to compile it. 
we compile with Java C. So I'm going to say Java C hello.java. And that ran the compiler. If we look, there's now an additional file in here, a class file. And so when you run through and you compile your Java files, they go into Java bytecode. Scala also compiles to Java bytecode if you're writing applications. Oh, and that is why they're able to, to talk to each other so well. We can then run the program off of that bytecode using Java, and we just give it the name of the class, and it runs. So that demonstrates command line. It also shows you your first program in Java. We'll come back and look at this more in detail. We'll do it inside of Eclipse, though. Oh, but I wanted you to see the compile phase and the running phase outside of the IDE because those things are going to be hidden from you when we go into the Eclipse environment.